Rich Square, KT Rolster. Welcome everybody, we are back here at the LCK 2019 Spring Split. It's gonna be Afrika up against SKT, a huge matchup to end the night. I'm Valdez, with me is Papa Smithy today on this beautiful Friday afternoon. We had a good first game, Sandbox taking out Gen D in a surprise 2-0 upset. I wonder how the second match is gonna go, Papa. And that's the thing is, what do we know for sure, Valdez, about any of this damn LCK Spring 2019? The surprises keep coming. Afrika makes their long way to debut, the 10th and final team to re-debut at Lull Park. SK Telecom T1 of the established org, the only ones that are doing any winning. It's been all the newcomers that have been winning recently, and SKT want to keep people away, but Afrika Freaks have a lot of talent on their lineup, and I think this one should be a really finely poised, potentially three-game best of three. Yeah, I mean, don't sleep on Afrika. A lot of people saying they're really strong right now, even stronger than their roster may suggest. UCAL in the mid lane especially is popping off. You also got Keen up in the top side and Dread, this really aggressive jungler coming into the lineup. We'll see how he does go along with those two solo lanes. But either way, guys, here are the results, the standings so far. Sandbox, funny to see them up on top, tied with SKT, who did win their matchup 2-0 to zero as well up against Jin Air. KT, Kingzone, Jin Air, Gen G, these are the teams with pretty lean results in Afrika. Where will we classify them? Because it will be a statement game for them to beat SK Telecom T1, take a win away from the Dream Team. They lost to Griffin 2-0, but we can't really hold that against teams too much with Griffin looking like the runaway favorites so far for LCK Spring. I just want to get into it and just see where Afrika are at, because as you know about us, Afrika are the team that annoys me to no end. <laughs> I love researching. I love getting in there and yeah. saying, all right, What's this team playing? Do they stream? No. Do they play solo queue? No. There is no way to know what they're doing until they play it on the rift. The biggest annoyance, but something that a lot of people call their biggest strength as well. A very deep roster, multiple different teams. They just practice in-house all day long, and they get a lot out of it, no doubt. We'll have to see how this lineup does up against SKT, the new dream team here. SKT looking good so far, but Afrika not going to be an easy opponent. KT, Yukal 선수가 갔다는 얘기도 듣고 미드만 바꿨는데 젊은 피로 바뀐 좀 그런 소문대로 정말 열정 있는 친구고 뭐라 해야 될까? 똘끼? 기인이랑 우칼이 핵심 전력인 것 같긴 해요. 유칼 선수가 이제 팀에 들어와서 미드 탑 그런 중심이라고 말씀들 많이 하시는데 시간이 지나면 좀 조금씩 더 합이 잘 맞아서 강해질 것 같아요. 기인 형, 이번 시즌은 행복으로 하자. <웃음> 저는 기인 선수 아무래도 되게 가장 잘하는 탑 중에서 한 분이 아닐까 싶을 정도로 되게 잘한다고 생각해요. 기인 선수도 저를 그렇게 생각해줬으면 좋겠네요. <웃음> 잘하는 선수? 뭐 딱히 표현할 말이 없네요. 2대1로 이기거나 질것 같아요. 어, 이유는 그냥 경기로 보여드리겠습니다. 어, 페이커 선수는 
이번 시즌이 정말 좀 준비 많이 올, 많이 올것 같아서 가장 경계되고 잘한 선수라고 생각돼요. 고마운 것 같아요. 그렇게 네, 말해주는 나름 재미있을 것 같아요. 저는 육할 선수가 자신감이 항상 넘쳐서 누구에게도 지지 않는다 생각을 해서 어우 뭐 상을 꺾기에는 아직 너무 짬이 덜 찼어요 짬이 덜 찼어 한 2년 뒤에 꺾었으면 좋겠습니다 뭐 역시 가장 기대되는 팀이라면 SKT인 것 같고요 어, 처음부터 엄청난 강팀을 만난 것 같아서 살짝 부담되긴 하지만 무난히 넘겨움을 내기만 하면 저희 팀이 잘 풀릴 거라 생각하거든요 이번에는 저희한테 양보 한번 해주셨으면 좋겠습니다 혜영이 형 개막전부터 우리한테 1승만 딱 넘겨주고 시작하면 딱 좋을 것 같아 <웃음> 아이 1승 내드릴게요 그럼 저희 2승 주세요 2승 1패로 저희가 이기겠습니다 <웃음> 드림팀이라 불리는 기대만큼 열심히 좋은 경기로 보여드리겠습니다 파이팅 드림팀을 출발 드림팀으로 만들어버리겠습니다 이제 뭐탑 미드 정글 바텀 어디 하나 피튀기지 않는 곳이 없을 테니까 이제 경기를 집중해서 봐주시기 바랍니다. 와이 제네 칸 is right. I would expect every lane and every position to be a bloody matchup. It's going to be a hell of a fun game to start this one off. Afrika versus SKT and the Trash talk only adds to the hype as we get into this big match. But you do notice that one of the main trash talkers is not there. That is not Spirit in the jungle. Twinkle, formerly known as Twinkle, now known as Dread, is the new jungler coming through for the side of Afrika Freaks. I had the chance to speak to Spirit about him at the Kespa Cup, and he said, damn, is this guy aggressive. So he is there to start facilitating some of those aggressive invades. I think he will be very similar to Canyon, who we saw pop off on Camille and Kha'Zix and other picks. Freaka Freaks are a young lineup of players who want to grind. These guys play an insane amount of scrims and internal practice. And all that practice after that 2-0 loss against Griffin has been waiting for today. Pretty much all full up here for this matchup. It's funny that you mentioned the aggressive junglers. It almost feels like we have more aggressive junglers than passive ones here in the LCK for this season, which generally makes for some really fun games. So very happy about that. Clid not to be left off of that list. Gonna be going up against Dread, the battle of the aggressive junglers there in that matchup. A huge cheer as SKT gets announced to come to the stage, the dream team looking to add another win to their standing so far. It's by having nine members on the roster, the dream team we know is five members and five members only Clid has maintained his spot, and Clint and Teddy, to me, have been the most consistent performers so far on the Dream Team lineup. Baker has had his moments, but also has had some little mistakes. Last was saw on that Urgot engage, for example, last time out, and Khan has struggled a little bit. Khan versus Keen, it was a hype matchup in 2018, it still is now, but more, even more than last year, you kind of give an edge to Keen. Yeah, it certainly does feel that way, and, uh, Definitely part of the reason why uh, some people are saying that Afrika actually have a decent chance to win this matchup. You look at SKT, you look at their dream team lineup, you say, hey, it looks like they should be able to take this one, but Afrika not going to go down without a fight. Impressive top lane, super strong young mid lane as well in UCAL. And I even heard some of the guys in the back talking about Eaming being one of the better, if not one of the best, 80 carries here in the LCK. We'll see if he lives up to that title. Can Aiming go from being a capable AD carry to matching Teddy and Mata in lane is a very different assignment. I feel like bot lane is the one that SKT has set up to carry from. And if SKT follow previous trends, don't we know what to expect? Lissandra Urgot in the first round, counter picking bot lane and trying to win through that and some decisive pick engages from say a Lissandra or Galio and Urgot. That's how you think about this game. But if freaking know exactly how SKT have drafted basically every game, they've kind of been a carbon copy. So if we see the same SKT, a freak of freak should be well versed in how to potentially counter pick some of these traditional SK Telecom T1 picks. Hey, you mentioned the picks and that bottom point there is the big one. No Fei up against Team Coma is the way they put it. The smart drafting, we already saw some earlier on today, which is cool as the meta develops here in Korea. K 
Can't wait to see what these two guys have to bring to the rift tonight. No Fey versus Coma used to be Rocks Tigers versus SKT. Think about misfortune support and some of the other crazy stuff that happened in that matchup. Now No Fey, not the head coach of Africa. We know that is I Love Oove, the sub uh, pro gaming god. He's still there, but that's above. That's the more removed role when it comes to drafting, when it comes to in-game stuff. That's going to be no face purview, and it's not going to be Coma directly. We can see him in the back. We'll probably try to catch him with the, the coach cam if he's trying to yawn or anything else. It is, of course, going to be Zephyr, the drafting coach of Afrika Freaks. Previously, it is Zephyr's first game against this old organization. Really excited to get this one underway. You can see all the players there that are not in the booths. They're right on stage. You can see what's on their screens as well. I was watching UCAL practice in the practice tool, and by God, that guy has a fast mouse hand. He has some of the best mechanics out of all the mid laners that we do have here in Korea. Uh, to see what he plays in the mid lane. Lots of tank mid laners, but even in that last matchup we had, we can see that that can change from matchup to matchup. There is definitely some defining points of the meta, but there's so much room for experimentation. And so far in LCK Spring, to the bold have gone the victories. The team's doing the crazy stuff, as recently evidenced as our first series, Summit, and the rest of Sandbox Gaming. They've so often been the victors. So will it be SKT innovating, or will the Freak of Freaks have something new to show us on their long-awaited debut? Well, we all know what this means. It's time for pick and ban for game number one, Afrika. It's going to be on the blue side. SKT going to join us on the red, starting off with the Victor Van to get this underway. That has been the go-to pick for Khan in solo queue and also when his Urgot is ripped away from his hot little hands. So no Victor top lane going to happen this time. Cassipia, obviously the tier list ban. I wonder where the tier list will be at because we saw Lucian actually slip out for the first time in the LCK in our first series of the night. Tom Kench ban. Until that loss in game number one for Gen.G, Tom Kench was basically picked every game and was undefeated. Finally, it has been defeated, but will not be claimed by Mata. Lucian this time not going to be seeing the light of day. Had one win in the counter matchup as they swapped it last second to mid up against Galio, but then did not go well in the second matchup for Ruler. And Lissandra going to be the last ban here on the side of Afrika. Freaka could be looking to first pick Urgot here. We know Yukal plays in the mid, played at KT Rolster at the World Championships at Keen. You know, I'm going to give him faith that he can play Urgot. No worries Thank about you. the Urgot pick there <laughs> as a flex. If you're wondering about Dread, the jungler here, it's not a rename of Spirit. This is a new jungler, came from Challenger's series. This is a guy who plays ultra aggressive. There's aggressive junglers, and it feels like every good jungler is called aggressive, and there's Dread, who's known for Kindred and other outer meta stuff and for basically always finding something with a skirmishing advantage. That could even be the Aatrox as the Aatrox three-way flex is locked in for a Freak of Freaks. Aatrox, a ridiculously strong pick, not just because he's a strong champion, but as you mentioned, the flex. You can put him pretty much anywhere, and that means that the Urgot will go the way of SKT alongside one other champion. This was Casper Cup. You'd think maybe Galia Urgot first round. They were first rounding on the red side, their solo lanes pretty exclusively. The Urgot part is no surprise. Faker or Khan gonna be piloting that one. What will Clid lock in for his team here? No real need to claim a jungle. In fact, jungle meta is picking jungle very, very late in the draft. So they're gonna go support. The Tom Kench defensive option ripped away from Mata. Seems like he's engaging. They pick up the Rakan first round on the red side. Yeah, the Urgot makes sense. They can't exactly put all their eggs in the Galio Rakan basket or got just a little bit too strong, which means that Afrika on the other side can easily pick that one up. Looks like they're going to do that. We have a new flex for Galio, was played in support in game two of the first matchup, so suppose it could be there, but probably not. Still just a really strong pick. Hey, you got to mention the stats when they're important. Elise support undefeated, Galio support undefeated. LCK 2019, baby, oh, no. as the Camille left open. Camille also a multi-way flex. Previous Afrika Freaks support Tucson played it in the bot lane, but Camille Gallio engages a guarantee for the side of Afrika Freaks. SK Telecom T1 looking to round out their first round. Could take an entire bot lane and start banning bot laners. Could also take a flex champion. Let's see what they want to pick up here for SKT. Zaya, just to make sure they have that Zaya Rakan for the bottom side. 
is going to be selected for them. So they have the flex of the Urgot, which means that the solo lane and the jungle remains for SKT, whereas a bottom uh, couple of champions remain here for Afrika Ezreal. Super OP on this patch is going to be banned away. So with Camille, Galio, and Aatrox locked in, we think we know the top side of the map for Afrika. Like you mentioned, there's no 100% nature to that anymore, but we think we know what to expect there. We think we know that Clid will probably lock in Lee Sin this game. Sejuani is available, but the Lee Sin also has some decent options here, and it is Clid's Ultra Comfort. Will Afrika ban away a jungler is something I'm interested to find out. As in the second round, bans sent to the bot lane and some of the traditional AD carries that Aiming has played in the past. Take away strong stuff, aiming kind of that, you know, pocket player, I suppose. Definitely a lot of strength in the top side. People tend to forget about aiming, but certainly has his own power. Akali making it all the way to the second ban phase is kind of funny, but other big tanky picks for the solo lanes were picked prior to that. This would be Jungle Gragas, very likely. Khan has played it in the top side, but they already have the Rakan, so we know it will not be a support, Gragas. And okay. look at this, a last second flex. This is a jungle, Elise. They're being considered enough for a freak of freaks. I actually wondered if Vladimir would be the lock-in here because they already have Camille Aatrox and they have a Wombo comp already. Vladimir, if you can get through laning phase, is great, but there's no Vlad Tom Kench option. So you wonder how you can get away with a Vladimir against Zaya Rakan. They're really considering a lot of different ideas, our freak of freaks. Marksman will be the more reliable choice because the laning phase could be tricky. They will finally settle on the Sivir. Unlikely to find a support that makes this lane too easy. You can consider the Braum to try to halt the feathers. The Alistair will be the riskier choice and the Alistair for just the god comp of engage on the side of Afrika. Sivir starts shouting and everyone else is clamoring to go for hard engage. Gonna be a fun one there for Jelly. He didn't look too confident about the pick. Hey! Oh, baby! Okay, Fiora comes out here into the lineup, and you couldn't look at that for the top lane, but Fiora versus Galio, also a thing we've seen before. We'll and see where these picks line up. And every SKT fan would have been clamoring for Khan to return to one of his two legendary carry champions. They are Jace and Fiora. His Fiora God status was locked in for Longju Gaming. Will this be the matchup? Fiora versus Aatrox. First time I would have seen this match in professional play. Like you say, they have till 20 seconds, and Fiora versus Galio has been a pretty traditional mid lane matchup in the past. We won't see it here. It will be much more the comfort for Khan. Very excited to track this on the top side, and also two ganking junglers will probably be hightailing their way top side to try to impact a carry versus carry matchup. They are definitely one of those champions that feels a lot better if you can get ahead early on in the game. Fiora's from behind, struggle to find really any lane pressure to go for that split push, but oh boy, you take a look at this composition. Oh. It's, it's balls to the wall. You're not going back with this kind of comp. If they get a control ward advantage and you walk in front of anyone, at best, Sivir shouting. At worst, five people are on top of your model, instant killing you. So much lockdown. However, what did SKT take from that? Fiora, that's not a grouping champion. That's a splitting champion. That hasn't been the impact so far of Khan on SK Telecom T1. They want some King Zone and Longju Khan in game number one of this series. Well, guys, it is time. Game number one of Afrika versus SKT begins now. Afrika always had a pretty strong fan base, but here in Korea, nothing really stands up to SKT. Loving Speaking the skin choice right there. <laughs> yeah. SK Telecom T1 Elise being worn by Clit. He didn't earn that skin, but he's on SKT, so you get to wear the stripes when you have made it and picked up the jersey. Aiming's got some pizzas. He's happy to throw out. We're talking about pizzas a lot in our first series, but yeah. not quite as literally as with pizza delivery Sivir. And you'll know, Valdez, that I'm a really big fan of Sivir right now. The laning phase against Zyrakon is actually pretty tricky. The timings on your spell shields aren't always clear, and the feather interaction with the spell shield can be irritating, but Sivir's buff was way bigger than people give it credit for. The ability to hit 
five members of the enemy team for equal damage has propelled Ezreal's ult way up to god tier status. And the same is true for what Sivir can do with her Q. The 600 CS win condition is there, but the early game hits harder than ever before. Really does. We've seen some nice Sivir plays so far, especially with the uh, spell shield timing. I think that was Zenit on the side of KT. He was just right on the ball with those spell shield timings. We'll see if aiming can live up to that. As it was pretty impressive, but can't wait to see Clid on Elise against Dread on the Camille. Definitely a couple of champions that can get really aggressive here in this matchup. Only real issue with Elise in this meta, and one of the reasons why she was phased out is not necessarily direct nerfs or item reasons, but the game went from level three ganks being the god tier to level two ganks, and that is the one area where Elise does fall away. She is very much level three centric compared to Camille, who just like Pantheon is ready to go at level two. But now at least we haven't seen too many level two cheese ganks be pulled off. Dread's top side, but he's spotted. They started on the opposite sides of the map. So the jungle pathing between two very aggressive junglers is gonna be a treat to follow. Dread spotted on a ward, spotted by the ghost Poro. And it looks like he knows that because of the Poro, he's just gonna go ahead and take the Krugs away on the top side of the map. Seems like they have a decent read about where Clid is as well. He's just down here going for his own scuttle. So they're gonna trade them in the early game at least. Does feel like the blue side vision has been to guarantee cams to the Camille, whereas the red side vision's been to spot. So they've actually been for different reasons a mm -hmm. information advantage to SKT in the early game. Not gonna be wielded just yet by Clid, but he won't be surprised to see that his Raptor cam's gonna be at best a little bit less chickens than he's used to. Unfortunate timing for him, actually, the Galio pushing in the Urgot in the mid lane. Yukal versus Faker in this matchup. Clay just going to clean up as many of the Raptors as possible, as you were talking about. Also, all the Krugs weren't taken. You can see that Dot is left remaining up in the top side, so also a little bit annoying for the side of Clay. Dread living up to his name, getting aggro already, counter jungling quite a bit. Early game, not going to be where this lane is going to shine for the Fiora, so understandably, going to be kind of left to the whims of Keen. In terms of where the priorities are at, definitely top and mid early game. I would give the advantage to Afrika and Camille's jungling around her strong side. So that part you can definitely understand. Bot lane is the strong side for Clid. So for now at least, it seems like the junglers are observing the tendencies of the draw they've locked in. Clid, interesting path, starts red, comes down, takes Scuttle, cleans up Raptors, and then makes her way all the way down to the bottom lane. There is, is a ward in the brush. A so. fresh ward as well. It's just yeah. placed because they know that Clid is playing bot side. Nicely done by, I'm gonna assume it was aiming, but not 100% clear on that. Looks like it, it's on cooldown. A team decision, gotta put down those wards. Backing on it right now is Mata, so. Feels like they're just memeing a little bit right now, but we'll see if Afrika lets them go. Looks like they will. It's actually a really good move because if you suspect there is a ward there, remember Zyra can't have that dual recall possibility, so it's a very great, very easy way to force the enemy's hand. They can't know for sure the ward was there because there was no reaction at all from Jelly and aiming. So now they can keep the ward there for the maximum duration, and there was no tell to the side of SKT that there is a lane ward from Afrika. Yeah, it's really nice. I mean, Sivir. Uh, you know, famously very fast at pushing, is able to deny nearly an entire wave down on the bottom side to Teddy and Mata, who just now make it back to the lane. Seeing for now at least Dread. He's chilling, waiting for the Rift Scuttle to spawn. Top side, happy side for him. Aggressive control ward placement. It's a brush that doesn't always get checked, so can be a little bit tricky. You can get that down relatively early. And looks like Clid isn't even gonna go into the Scuttle Crab location right now. Perhaps doesn't feel comfortable enough. It's just heading up towards the Krugs for now. No next level, next levels just yet. It's all been pretty calculated so far. Jungle's playing on their strong sides. No one really veering into dangerous territory. The jungles have kind of been ships in the night outside of meeting at the enemy Raptor camp there that Clid found Dread with his hand in the cookie jar a bit. No successful ganks for the Camille just yet. She definitely has the earlier ability to impact the lanes. 
Let's see how Afrika planned to play around the bot side because Camille Gallio is the reliable engage and sending everyone bot lane is always something you want to do with a Gallio. That you do, but at least the Zyra Khan, once they hit level six, can be tricky to get on top of and gank, especially that uh, Teddy does have heal. We saw that be a factor in the first matchup with Peanut going too deep onto a Callisto with heal and not able to pick up the kill. So we'll see if SKT can play around that kind of bottom lane party gank. And one thing we'll learn from this is where SKT's communication is at. Because that's been the one thing we've wanted the most, right? Who's the shot caller? Who's doing the dominant voice? They, when they've been interviewed and asked about they say, oh, it's some pretty diplomatic shot calling. And when you're winning, diplomatic shot calling is usually fine, right? Just in general, when you're winning, shot calling is a little bit less under the microscope. The reason why I say in this game shot calling is important is not so much that Afrika Freaks are predicted to be a strong team. It's not even paying lip service to how good Afrika was in the past. It's... The unique variable SKT have is that just the uh, E is a bit short there from Faker, but think about how SKT win this game. It's largely around the split push. It's largely around Fiora in the one and the four of SKT not being engaged upon by a cavalcade of hard engage on the side of Afrika Freaks. Whoa. Played in dread. That was a close one. Feels like both these junglers really hanging around mid for large periods of time, just waiting for ganks that they expect could happen but no one has really found each other until that moment where the cocoon goes wide onto the Camille. Camille level six before the Elise, and now he's getting aggressive with red buff here, trying to get the smite, and it looks like Clid just gonna give it away. Exactly as Yukal was in range as well, he'd already dodged the laning phase, pushed into Faker, and guaranteed he would have first rotation. So very good communication there between Dread and his new mid laner and Yukal. But again, coming back to where this game is going, no one can be caught. Speaking of getting caught. There's the flash, and Faker in a ton of trouble right now. The easy first blood goes the way of Dread. Clean Camille gank for the first blood. And Valdez, it's so reliable. So many different ways to engage like that. Communication will have to be pristine. Or in the late game, one pick might thwart any split push from Khan. I mean, Faker not even going to blow any of his summoners. He knew he was dead. The second the Camille lands that one, he had to flash first. Otherwise, he was pretty much boned. And even then, might have been a kill. So nice little play there by Afrika. When's the right time to flash against Camille Gallio? Before, to be hell away from them. It's yes. kind of the only good answer there. It's now. <laughs> exactly. Could have tried flashing then. I think he still would have died. So Probably. really good, no good time to flash. He goes down anyway. Good gank from Afrika. Took a, t a bit of time, but you see the coaching team there of four. Vinyl Cat, Yon, Nofei, and head coach I Love Oove all understand that that's exactly the sort of practice they put in that comes up on the stage to first blood. Clid here in the top side, it looks like Keen has a, a good idea that something's up, especially because Khan is trying to beat him into a fight right now. And so Clid's gank not going to come off here just yet. He's been waiting for quite a while. Isn't it fun that Afrika versus SKT, as things stand, is also a bit of a clash of ideologies? We'll hold the point for a bit as Clid is so <laughs> desperate to make this gank work, but not been able to find anything so far. It's hard, too, because they don't really have secure vision up in the top side. Control ward here by Keen. They don't know exactly where Camille is, whereas Afrika seemed to have the perfect read that he is up in that brush. So, And that read is founded on practice. Again, the reason why I say Clash of Ideology is SKT have gone for the big names. They are a team that streams a lot. They have a big streaming contract. You know, the money and the prestige that all brings. Afrika doesn't scream and hides everything. So no scrims. So no uh, public information at all, but here in the mid. Oh boy, it's time to trade and kill as Galio is going to be put into death chamber by the Urgot. Nice follow-up play there by Faker and Clid to win a uh, kill back to their team. And still were able to play around the tendencies of Yukal of the past. Nicely done in the mid lane there, and it means one-to-one -one between these two squads. It could translate into a Drake. Remember, Elise always going to be... Pretty expedient in making that one happen, and aiming and jelly when it comes to early priority are the weakness of this Afrika draft. Seems to be that way. Up on the top side, we return to Keen versus Khan. Another one of these highlight matchups that we were looking at so far. No kills there just yet. Very even on farm as well. So looking good for both of them so far. Cloud Drake picked up here for the side of SKT. Good to deny that, I suppose, up against Afrika's full engage comp. And if you ask me right now, 
whose position in the game am I liking more? I'd definitely say SKT's because Fiora is going CS for CS with the Aatrox and eventually will be a level 16 Fiora. And we all know how that goes. Really nice execution on the mid lane gank. Just as on point as the one we saw from Afrika moments before. But that's the current game state. Fiora is doing better than expected and the game otherwise is largely even. It's all about mid game execution in this game. The catch versus the ability to play three lanes and honestly just play the Fiora lane. If you wield Fiora to its full extent, SK Telecom T1 should win. If you use the engage on Afrika's side to the full extent, Afrika should win. And it's always these games where you have very differing goals that I enjoy the most because it's so clear at every moment after about 25 minutes who's ahead and who's behind. Certainly very cool. And the Rift Heralds here picked up by Afrika. Nice little win for the side of Dread, able to start that one up. I suppose they knew that Clid was going to head back, and he was in the base while that was all happening. So even if they did have vision, probably not much that SKT could do to follow up on that one. Mata's had a very long leash because of the Zyra Khan advantage to get very deep vision on to, say, for example, the red buff. You can see Camille lit up at the moment. CDR boots the rush here. More grand entrances, more ability to look for that pick CC. Rakan's already squishy, and getting a Ninja Tarby or a Mercs isn't going to change it. He need a lot more items to, you know, be a tanky support. Not really what he's about. We'll see if the follow-up on his engages can be there. Decent amount of follow-up, I'd say, with the Elise Urgot, but outside of that, not too much. Can Fiora get away with first a scaling champion and then a scaling item purchase in a pretty late cull picked up by Khan. We already uh, laid the table setting on where we thought this matchup was going and the cull picked up around 10 minutes is a double down on that. Khan is looking for the late game. Afrika have overwhelming ability to burst in the mid game. Mid game starts about now, Valdez, and that's why every time Galio leaves lane, everyone on SKT side gets the hell out. Yeah, I mean, you were talking about it in the early game. It's Galio Camille. You have that engaged with Alistair in the bottom side. Look at the red side jungle of Afrika. It's lit up like a Christmas tree by SKT, playing very safe around that, making sure they don't get ganked. But how about a Rift Herald for some extra gold in the mid side? At least both Clid and Mata are there to not allow them to get any more than just a couple of plates. That trade looked pretty good for the side of Khan as well. So Fiora doing way better than expected. It is Grasp Fiora, if you guys are going to move your attention to the top right of the screen. So ability to take bone plating or some extra sustain options has allowed him to do very competitively in this lane. So that's the learning for me here is that Fiora is able to go CS for CS with the top lane Aatrox. I wonder if we'll see more of it or if it's just a specialist's choice for Khan. I mean, you think about it, you have the repose to deal with all of his stuns that Aatrox well, has in his hey, kit, and you're, you're so, you're ice skating, right? Away from all of his, uh, you know, AoE abilities, essentially, if, and the lockdown, so. If we weren't casting, good. if we weren't casting, I'd slap you, Valdez, because you have a repose for a million different types of annoying CCs, knockbacks, knockups. Aatrox is really damn annoying to deal with. I don't think the single repose should be enough. So I think this is more about execution by Khan, who so far has been playing this damn clean. Yeah, he looks good. You can certainly dodge a lot of Aatrox stuff. He's made it look pretty easy so far. Went for the early Ninja Tabi as well. You need that movement speed to deal with that kind of champion. So feeling pretty good. That one ward that Dread keeps getting spotted on means that Baker has been pretty safe afterwards. Gotta say the vision in general. We liked it at level one, spotting out the enemy jungle and a lot of spotting. They continue spotting now. Nice cocoon here. Should be flipped over the back. Flash is here for you, Cal. Gets the stun into the combo. Doesn't even Beautiful. bother to get that one down. And Baker able to land it. Gets the kill to Gallia. And man, wards can turn to so much. The wards in the early game allowed Elise to stay away. And two kills now on the mid lane through really good synergy between Clid and Faker. This is good to see, but here we go. Well, they spot them coming in, aiming, taking a ton of damage. Has to flash away from that one. Mana makes his way in with the grand entrance from downtown. And Dread in so much trouble now is going to be taken up. Nice follow-up cocoon here onto Jelly. 
Doesn't look like they'll be able to get much, but SKT so much room on the map. Even Teddy's pushing the bottom lane. Exactly. This game's going to go into hell in a handbag so quickly here. They tried to make an aggressive pick, but the moment that the boomerang blade missed, they weren't going to have enough damage to turn. All of SKT is backing up their mid lane jungle duo. A Drake turret damage all to the benefit of SKT. So everything feels good. Mid lane, a couple of very important ganks by Clid here on to UCAL. Bottom lane, because of that rotation, able to get a big win. They take out the first turret down there and the second Drake as well. And then the top lane we were mentioning, Khan just winning that lane. It feels going very even on that Fiora who wants to scale. This deep ward that you see UCAL now pathing over spotted Camille a moment earlier. That helped Faker not die. And then also was the reason this kill was academic for the duo of Faker and Clid. Really intelligently played. This is the crafty veterancy we want to see from a squad like SKT's. So many other big names have been on the losing side in LCK Spring so far. But you can see the in and out of game practice has been pretty on point by the side of SKT. And now we get to the worrying side of the coin for Afrika. Remember, all those kills came in while the Galio ult and the Camille ult were available. If you fall far enough behind in gold, and right now they're not behind in gold, but there's the potential for that to grow at this point in the game with some outer turrets down, then maybe the Wombo doesn't kill people and Fiora is bit pushing, and that's where you just straight up lose the game if you're a Freak of Freaks. I said in the beginning, Fiora feels a lot better when you're winning the game, and... Already going even feels like winning the lane, and you can see that even Keen isn't confident enough to even fight over the Krugs. I mean, Khan is just owning him in that sense, and now he's got a red buff. So what can you really do? Keen seemingly having a very hard time in this lane. Love bringing back the Fiora for what would be a very hard lane. We're going to have a big engage, though, trying to get on top of Mata. The Blasting Plant, though, knocks Dread out of the Hextech Ultimatum, which gives him the room to get out that is huge to keep them safe as turrets go down on the other side all calculated for skt and meanwhile afrika at all see the china turn on to faker but i don't know if this is the right call dread he is so squishy as well he has that stopwatch which is gonna save him but faker and mata going 2v4 gonna win the fight meanwhile khan's under the inhibitor turret at 18 minutes there's that one repost it's in going the grand in. entrance he is going to go in and hop his way out. Doesn't want to overcommit underneath the turret, but you could see how this Fiora matchup is just looking so good. It only gets better and better, and that's not even with the cull cashed in. The Ching is going to be massive the moment he has that. Speaking of Ching, Teddy pushing up, getting damage onto this out of turret in top. Everything's coming up SKT in the first 19 minutes. Dream Team looking good so far. We'll see if they can keep it up here. It still is only four kills in 19 minutes, but there has been so much other action that puts SKT in the driver's seat for this one. That Camille Gallio combo, we saw it a couple of times, and honestly, it's not doing much work for Afrika so far. A lot of our long-term viewers will remember what, how we talked about TF Ultimate in the metas where TF was really powerful. It's how good is the first destiny? If you mess that one up, maybe the next one doesn't matter. The Camille Gallio duo of ults is pretty much the same, right? Very long cooldown, but the most guaranteed impact. You're showing up with two people with good burst damage. 9.1 Gallio, he blows people away and then some. But if it's just not being used because the timings are not there, because the warding has been so on point by SKT and so deep, they've never actually found the chance to wield all their wombo combos and both in the skirmishes, which haven't been dominated by Camille Gallio, and also in the 1v1 by Khan, everything's come off SKT, and now maybe it doesn't matter if they find the picture-perfect Gallio engage. 20 minutes, ticks, and SKT already setting up vision around the Baron. It looks like two or even three control wards already are down, just to make sure that Faker can push down this top turret, as well as begin to pressure in there. The Zaya. The least combination, pretty decent at taking out that Baron, pretty fast at least. Three winning lanes in CS. Things looking good for SKT. They control the pace of this game, but will we see a desperate engage? Because it already feels like the next one from Afrika might be necessitated in the next two to three minutes. Jelly Force Ultimate, just a, a bit of a wonky positioning there. Shouldn't have even been in range, but get hit by Cocoon. 
and has to ultimate and now go back with a recall. So even more map pressure given over to SKT with one swift move. This is Jelly, the man who stood behind Tucson for all of 2018 and 2017, finally making that big starting spot onto Afrika. Always awkward when you're in an Alistair game, you're unsure if it's time to head by Pulverize or disengage, ends up just wasting his ultimate with no gain at all. The Sivir Alistair lane, lack of control there, is one of the contributing factors to Afrika really feeling like they're being pulled in every direction and not finding any wins in any of them. Yeah, nothing really going right for them. At least the Camille hasn't died so many times, only once in this game. Really just has been the more effective ganks in the mid side by Clid. The first one, super clean, gets the first blood over to Dread. But after that, it was all the Clid Faker show to win that lane. And how about a third Drake, a second Mountain Drake as well to just speed up that Baron to even higher highs. SKT gonna be pretty happy with that. Would love to go back and do a VOD review of the early game warding. To me, the warding in this game was oh, the yeah. real MVP because they anticipated so much based on no information. They didn't even know the tendencies of a freak. No one can. They show nothing when it comes to public information, but they both read the draft of the enemy team and just had a very next level read on the game because the safety by which they've been able to open up this goal lead is what should be commended. This hasn't been explosive. It's been calculated. Clean stuff from the beginning, other than just the one death in the mid lane, which was pretty unavoidable for the situation that he was in. It's been really clean stuff from the side of SKT. Definitely good news for them. After they did go down to Dom 1 Gaming in the Kespa Cup, a couple of eyebrows were raised and saying, hey, what's this about? I thought they were the dream team. I thought they were going to win Kespa Cup, maybe face Griffin in the finals, and then that would be you know, a close matchup. But go down to Dom 1 Gaming. But they'll be happy to say that they look much better here so far for their first couple of matches of LCK. And the biggest data point for me is it's with Khan on a carry. It's with Khan not on Urgot Lissandra kind of duty. It's very much on, again, he's even away from the rise. He's on something that can attack lane and scales well. Dread dives in, doesn't find anyone. Hookshot on cooldown. Right, just glory by Faker. They want blood as Dread even has to flash away from that one after hookshotting really deep into the Baron pit. Gets away, but loses a lot. The uh -oh items are there now for the Fiora. Trinity Force and Ravenous Hydra Ooh. are completed very, very difficult. Maybe impossible for Keen to outplay the Fiora. She's also about to crest level 16, and the ult scaling is going to be relevant there as well. So right now, everything is coming up SKT. They are in a wonderful position in this game. Now, they've been in a similar position and lost. You'll remember the game where Mata was everywhere on the Alistair, and they feel, felt like they had an unassailable lead and went on to lose against Dam1 Gaming. This time, it feels like they're a lot more on point, especially with their macro plays and their rotations. So SKT fans will hope history doesn't repeat itself there. They have so many different things they can do. They send Fiora bot. The question is, how the hell do we deal with this Fiora? They get the deep vision down. SKT don't have any worries about being hit by a Wombo combo. So in so many different ways, they should be able to trade up. Anything less than extra turrets or a Baron is probably a misfire based on the game state right now if you freeze it at 24.30. Perhaps they needed more pressure in the top side to shut down this Fiora because you were mentioning that call that came in late. It's part of the reason why very far ahead in gold now is Khan and feeling pretty good. Jelly now looking for an engage in the zero vision jungle for Afrika. They're really struggling to find anything here. One of the few comps we've seen that can actually use sweep as well. They have an Elise who's very elusive. Baker is unkillable. Rakan can jump over walls. They can actually clear vision better than most comps on this patch. Is under turret, seems like Khan misjudged that one. Don't worry, guys, he's got Ravenous Hydra. Next minute, oh, there lane. it is. Mata finds two. The Galio comes in, but Alistair goes down first, and they're looking for Dread as well. Keen and Khan both TPing in, but already two members of Afrika are down. Yukal trying to do his best to fight up against Khan. Goes for the flash here on a Faker, but it's not going to go too well as Keen is going to be burst down. Could even be an ace, only aiming with no room to even DPS is left alive as SKT take out four.
Four kills for zero, no deaths at all. SKT play that perfectly. Like we mentioned, with their sweepers, they can clear vision and actually make a proactive pick at 24 minutes around inner turret territory in mid. They have a lot of Baron damage, but a lot of squishies here. They'll trade tank it down. They'll get the Baron and SKT open up. A huge lead in game number one. Wow, and now you got Khan on oh, uh, no. Fiora with Baron and unbelievable pockets filled with gold right now. He hasn't even gone back and bought right now. He's probably going to pick up a third full item when he does. Let's take another look at the fight, though. Watch the replay here. It's all about the assertive picks you can make when you have a control ward lead. The deep teleport in the mid lane is always going to be turned upon by two plus members. They just kill the closest target. Everything lines up for SKT, and now in the one, in the five, in the catch, SKT have nothing to worry about. They have what feels like an unassailable lead in game number one. Khan even joining for this team fight. It was half over by the time the top laners even got there, so Grouping feels Fiora. much better for Fiora in that sense. Grouping Fiora is either the game is over or the game is over, and this is definitely the latter, as this is the joyful time to queue up, do about a thousand damage and watch as your Zaya. There's just no threat onto her because unfortunately people are exploding in front of the SKT duo lane. Third Mountain Drake means that Fiora is basically untouchable. Feels unfortunate to say, but definitely has the feeling that SKT have this one in the bag. But more importantly, just how clean it was. A lot of people talking about how good Afrika is right now based on what they've heard. But in the first game here, SKT have certainly outplayed them to a great effect. What we've seen from SKT was one single style. They played a lot of times, and you never know how to apply Occam's Razor to that. Are they playing it because they think it's the strongest, or are they playing it because that's all they can play? And people, depending on whether you're a fan or a hater, will always look at it one way or the other. That's why I like to see it and say, yes, in 2019, Khan can still load up on the hard carries and make it work. We weren't sure. He's been very out of sorts for the better part of six months. Baker chases in. He wants Jelly. Yeah, Jelly, kind of unfortunate right now. He's going to have to ultimate after the Fear Beyond Death does land onto him. And nobody wants to go near Khan. Nope. Triple Mountain Drake. See you later, turret. As a couple of them will go down here. Khan and the rest of SKT pushing for that win. And when does Khan start seeing three bad guys and trying to outplay? That's going to be the icing on the cake. Is there's the Sivir ult. Well, they got to make something happen, and they want Faker. He's so tanky, though. Keen just pops almost there on the backside. Jelly as well, super low. Oh. And Khan in the backside onto Dread. He's super low, but it doesn't matter. Double kill goes to Faker as Afrika fall apart like a house of cards. And SKT going to easily take the victory here in about 28 and a half minutes. This is going to be a slow from the side of SKT. Excellent performance from them from level one, from the smart wards they put down. The vision led the way, the players did the rest, and well-deserved victors in our first game of the series. Mop the floor with them in game number one, and the hype is real. We're all filled up here at the Law Park. Lots of SKT fans going to be ecstatic with the way that game number one did go in the favor of SKT. And it's with that swagger, the macro swagger and the micro swagger. It's the way they did it that should now to let us know that that calendar circling of the 31st of January seems pretty damn justified. Griffin versus SKT will be on the final match day of January. It can't be soon enough, Valdez, because it's great to see this game one performance. And if SKT can back it up, maybe we do have two runaway hype trains to open up LCK Spring 2019. Yeah, Dom One Gaming, a strong team, able to best them in the Casper Cup, but SKT showing that they can defeat a couple of teams that they should be better than on paper here in pretty easy fashion. We'll have to see how it goes into game two, though. We've seen teams look strong in game one and then drop the ball twice in a row, KT. Uh, we'll see how SKT does in that sense as we do move along here. I don't know who I would give the MVP to in this one. I feel like it was more of a team effort from the side of SKT. I agree with you on that one, but I'm just loving stepping back and enjoying. We're at Lowell Park. It's full on a Friday night. The hottest ticket in the world is watching this Afrika SKT series. Afrika have always had it over SKT through many different rosters. The Afrika org over the last three is the only one with an extended winning record. Can't count Griffin as just a single split. Mm. An extended winning record, the only established org is Afrika. I want to see Afrika bounce back, but I love that SKT with a different identity had just the tonic with the Fiora Spitbush comp. 
I mean, they let the Aatrox go through. It's not something that we see very often, and they just said, hey, we have we have the answer. And it's Khan on Fiora, it seems. Looked really good in game one. But you look at this answer key here, and you appreciate that SKT gave up a kill, because otherwise it looks like they're the spoilers, Valda, as the only thing they lost in this game. A single kill, and I believe the Rift Herald went the way yeah. of yeah. Afrika as well, not reflected on this. That's the way you don't get caught by your teacher. You get one wrong. Yeah. Got a couple of small ones wrong, but when it came to the main things, the A plus definitely deserved. 96% still feels very good from the side of SKT. Excited to see what happens in game number two as well. I mean, I think Afrika could turn it around as we do go into the red side for them. But guys, we are going to take a quick break before we do get to game number two of Afrika versus SKT. We'll be right back. I'll wait for a Valdez. Let's see if there's any changes. Are we going to see Spirit in the lineup for game number two? Definitely a big question there for sure. Spirit, another old man that we do have here in LCK. Would love to see him show his face. Maybe some jungle cart this would be also really yes. fun to watch. Yes. But we're going to have to wait, guys, before we do get into that matchup. We'll see you in a bit.